In backpacking, gear is the most personal part of the journey. What may work well for one person may spell disaster for another. Today, we're talking buyer's remorse. These are the pieces of gear that I regret spending my money on. And the first piece of gear we're talking about today is the Osprey Atmos AG50 backpack. Now, understand, all of the gear that I'm talking about today isn't necessarily bad gear, it's just gear that absolutely did not work for me. And so, uh, some of this gear you're gonna think, that is a fantastic piece of gear, but for me, it just didn't work. And so the first piece of gear on this list is the Osprey Atmos AG50. Back in the fall of 2020, I decided I wanted to try out your standard typical backpack. I'd been using a ULA Ohm 2.0 for the past two years and really enjoyed the pack, but I decided I wanted to try something a little different, something a little more mainstream. So I got my hands on the Osprey Atmos AG50 and uh, I just didn't enjoy it. The first trip I took it on was to Alabama with Brad from As The Crow Flies Hiking. Uh, we had a great weekend, the trip was a lot of fun, I did not enjoy the pack whatsoever. For me, it was uncomfortable, it was bulky, it had too many pockets and too many things connected to it, and for the style of backpacking that I do, it was just too much of a backpack. Uh, I really like backpacks that are simpler that are really just a big open cavity with a couple pockets on the outside and a stretchy pocket on the back that I can tuck a lot of gear into. I don't really want a bunch of places to organize and to put things. And I want something that weighs two pounds or less. Uh, I still want a frame pack, but I don't want things that are that heavy. So for me, I've been using the Chicken Tramper UL 45 liter backpack. I think this is a phenomenal backpack and I've talked about it in other videos, but this pack weighs just under two pounds. It's huge. I actually had them mod this out to be a 50 liter pack, so it's the same size pack as the Osprey, but this is lighter. It's made with a more waterproof fabric. This thing is just as durable as that Osprey. I have run this across rocks and, and trees and other things, and for me, this pack gets it done. It is a framed pack, but it's lighter. I like the way it carries. I love the simplicity of it. And for me, that Osprey was just kind of a waste of my money. There are times in your life where you see something on a video and you think, that looks really cool, I wanna get my hands on it. You get online, you spend the money, it comes in, you take one look at it and realize, what in the world was I thinking? And that's what this is. This is the Caldera Cone alcohol stove system. I saw several videos where this was being used and decided I was gonna get my hands on it and give it a try. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never taken it on one trip. As soon as I got it home, uh, I saw how it works and I saw how bulky it was and it just didn't work for me. Um, to use this, you open it up, you've got your little alcohol bottle, there's a cup in there. Um, I haven't even taken the alcohol stove out of the plastic yet. And you've got this huge cone that's your wind cone. This thing is massive. While I'm not an ultra light backpacker, I do like gear that is small. This thing is huge. It's just absolutely massive. And for me, it just didn't make any sense. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you send it back? I just always assumed at some point I would use it on a trip, and I still haven't. So for me, this was a massive waste of money, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I'm even talking about it. But instead of using this, I use this. This is this MacGyver stove. I've talked about this about 100 times on this channel. This is the smallest little stove in the world. Uh, really simple to make. Um, actually got this one from Mark, AKA MacGyver, and uh, love this stove. I've used it on so many trips. Simple to use. I just take some aluminum foil for a windscreen and I'm done. Uh, this, with a little bit of aluminum foil compared to this mess, uh, for me, there's just no comparison. This is just a better setup for me. For the first year that I was backpacking, I was using the BRS 3000 stove. Uh, this is a stove that a lot of people own, a lot of people have used. It weighs in at 25 grams, less than an ounce, and it gets the job done. If all you're gonna do is boil water with it, it is perfect for what it does. But in 2020, I decided I wanted to upgrade, upgrade to a better stove. And so I got my hands, on the Pocket Rocket 2. And at first I thought, this is great, this is gonna be so much better. This 
weighs more than twice the weight of the BRS stove, it's louder, and really the boil time is not significantly that much better using this to my BRS stove. Uh, so I found myself a little bit disappointed in this compared to the BRS. So what am I using instead of the Pocket Rocket? Now I'm using the Crux from Optimus. What I love about this stove that separates it from the Pocket Rocket too is one, the burner size. As you can see, the burner on this one is much larger than the burner on this one. Why is that a big deal? Couple different things. One is just simple heat dispersion. Uh, the more you can disperse the heat, the easier it is to cook. If everything is centered in one spot all the time, you're gonna have a burn spot in the bottom of your pot or your pan or whatever it is you're cooking with. Another thing about the Crux that I love over the Pocket Rocket 2 is the fact that the Crux is almost silent. And I'm really not kidding when I say that. It is so, so quiet. One of the reasons that I started using alcohol stoves about a year and a half ago was because I wanted something that was a little bit quieter when I was out in the backcountry. I didn't like that jet engine sound of the, uh, of the pocket rocket. It was just so loud. Even the BRS is a loud stove. And so I wanted something that wasn't quite so loud but could still get the job done. And the Crux is one of the quietest stoves you're gonna find on the market. It's also very good because you have serious control over the flame. Of the stoves I've used, this one has the best control of the flame itself. You can take it down to a really low flame to simmer whatever it is you're cooking or you can put that thing on full blast and boil water pretty quickly. Over the BRS and over the Pocket Rocket 2, I will take this and unfortunately as popular as the Pocket Rocket 2 is, this is kind of a regret for me. Up next is a piece of gear that you guys are probably gonna give me a lot of garbage about because I've talked about how much I love it and sang its praises, but unfortunately things change, opinions change, and for me, the Grail water purifier is now no longer one of my favorite pieces of gear for backpacking. Now understand, I take this with me almost every day. I'm using this water filter, water purifier all the time because in everyday use, this is a phenomenal product. Uh, it doesn't matter how nasty the faucet is or the water fountain or wherever you're getting water from, this will clean it up and it will taste fantastic. I like this for maybe a short overnight trip where you can kind of bring in uh, some water and you don't have to filter a lot. But for a multi-day trip, I found this to be cumbersome. Uh, only being able to do 16 ounces per filter got to be pretty frustrating. I know some people, they'll just bring dirty water and as they need water, they'll filter it into this and that may work, but for the weight and the size and what it does, I found that I just am not crazy about this on bigger trips. Um, unless I wanted to get the bigger one, which weighs even more, this was just cumbersome. It wasn't the best choice for me. Instead, I'm using the quick draw filter from Platypus. And I've already talked about this in a video or two. This thing is phenomenal. The flow rate is incredible. I love the end caps on it. It's lighter than the Sawyer Squeeze, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. It's also a little bit shorter than the Sawyer Squeeze and it's thinner than the Sawyer Squeeze. Um, now I'm gonna need to use this probably a lot longer before I can give a full scale review of it. But for right now, this is definitely what I'm using instead. And while I love this filter for everyday water filtering and drinking. For me, I just don't like it for backpacking. When I first got into backpacking, like most people, footwear was a big deal. What kind of socks was I gonna have? What kind of boots or shoes was I gonna wear? And I was really doing a ton of research and it seemed like everybody I talked to and every website I looked at, every YouTuber that was online were using darn tough socks and so, I bought myself a few pairs of darn tough socks to hike on the Shell Toey Trace back in 2018. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I've never had more blisters in my life than I had with these socks. I'd like to say I'm kidding about that, but I'm really not. Uh, darn tough socks did not do a good job for me. I know a lot of people swear by them. They really do have the best warranty in the business and maybe for like short day hikes, maybe five or six miles, these aren't bad for me, but the moment I get over 12 miles on a trail, I find myself getting hot spots, sore spots, blisters begin to form. 
and it's been consistent every time I've used Darn Tough socks. I really like how the socks feel, but for some reason, they destroy my feet. And I bought like three or four pairs of these things when I got started because everybody raved about how great they were. Unfortunately for me, these just didn't cut it. Instead, I use Injinji socks, and I've talked about this multiple times on this channel. Toe socks saved my feet. Uh, I don't get blisters when I go backpacking. I just don't get them anymore. And a lot of it is due to moving to toe socks. Uh, a lot of the way my toes are shaped, I've got a little pinky toe that tends to overlap the ring toe on my left and right foot. And having the, the toe separated with fabric has prevented blistering between those toes. Also, with the darn tufts, I found myself getting blisters on the bottoms of my feet, which was really odd. And for some reason, I just don't have that with the Njinji's. And so while I love the Njinji socks, and this is some of the best money I've ever spent in my life, the money I spent on my darn tough, I'm never going to get back. And I'm always going to have the memories of those nasty, blistered feet that I got as a result of these socks. Now, like I said, this is all gear that didn't work out for me. That doesn't mean it won't work out for you, but you've got to find out for yourself. So why don't you leave in the comments below gear that you guys have bought that you really regret spending your money on. I'd love to know the regrets that you guys have over the years on the money that you've spent. And if you'd like to watch a video about a piece of gear that I wasn't really happy with, but then Frankensteined it into a brand new piece of gear that I love and goes with me on every trip, check out this video right up here. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I'll catch you on the next go-round.